husband shoots his wife to death, a wife who he'd been with for 14 years and shares two children together. Still on the live is wife that he has been with for 14 years. She has two kids for him. She hon he on a lived her, then born her body, ran away. <sighs> In this video, I have two things to share with you all. We are still talking about the century men, but before we go about the century men video, let me show you all this news, then I'll be back. A husband shoots his wife to death, a wife who he'd been with for 14 years and shares two children together. He then takes her body to the backyard, burns her, and then buries her body in a shallow grave. 39-year-old Kenneth Hardin Jr. shot 40-year-old Carrie Hardin, his wife, in their home after a domestic dispute. Now, Kenneth Hardin is a pastor, okay? And his wife is a nurse, but she also owned a multi-million dollar nurse staffing company that she built from the ground up. So they were doing very well for themselves. On the day that he killed his wife, he called his father and flew his father out to Georgia where they live, where this actually took place. It's alleged that he met his father at the bank, gave his father access to all of his financial information, gave him his last will and testament, and then ultimately confessed to his father that he killed his wife and said that he would be on the run. He then fled to Louisiana where he was apprehended, but his father was the one who made the call to turn him in. Now, a friend of Carrie said that she texted her late that night and asked her if she could come over and spend the night with her. And a half, she was brutally murdered after years of hiding from others the domestic violence that she suffered. Advocates for victims of domestic violence hope others will hear this story and they will reach out for help. I never imagined that something like this would happen to Carrie. You know, it's like, no way. Carrie was too big for this to happen to her. Alicia Allen and Chastity Adams Miller are still in shock over their friend's brutal murder. <laughs> Carrie Harden graduated from Fort Zumwalt South High School, became a nurse, and then built a multi-million dollar nurse staffing business. So the most impressive thing about Carrie was she always wanted to improve on things. Carrie married Ken Harden and they moved to Georgia in 2020, but there had been a previous incident of domestic violence. Kenny had bust out the window to the bathroom uh, to get to her and chased her down the road um, with the gun. I asked her mother why Carrie never left Ken. She wanted to keep her family together and she believed that he would stop, that he wouldn't really harm her. From the couple's home outside of Atlanta, hours before her murder, Carrie texted her friend Alicia asking if she could come stay with her. I'm not going to call the police because, you know, I'm just afraid that something bad will happen out of it. And I just want to go to sleep and I'm going to lay down and hopefully nothing happens. Carrie Harden had taken a job at Cochrane VA Medical Center and contacted a divorce attorney. Ken Harden's accused of shooting his wife with a shotgun, burning her body and burying it in a shallow grave. It breaks my heart that I didn't call the police for her. A GoFundMe account has been set up to help with the legal battle to settle Carrie's estate and seek custody of the couple's two children. Faye County Sheriff Barry Babb says in his almost 40 years of law enforcement experience, this is one of the more grisly crimes he's had to work. But thanks to quick work and coordination with other agencies, they were able to catch this suspect, even though he'd fled all the way to Louisiana. It's shocking as hell. Definitely seemed like something that would be on like a, uh, one of those shows. I didn't expect that. Jabril Muhammad says he would have never expected his neighbor, 39-year-old Kenneth Hardin Jr., to be accused of something like this. He seemed like a cool dude. Like I said, he had a fireworks show down here for the kids before on the 4th of July. Fayette County Sheriff Barry Babb says Hardin shot and killed his wife, 39-year-old Carrie Hardin, early Tuesday morning while his children slept. So they went to school on Tuesday, never seeing their mother. The sheriff's office says it learned of the crime after Hardin flew his father into town and gave him his last will and testament. He had told his father that he had shot his wife and pretty much that he was now going to be on the run. Harden's father called the sheriff's office who began investigating. Babb says a license plate reader helped them track Harden's car to a motel in Louisiana. A SWAT team there moved to take him into custody while they searched the large property for his wife's body. I got almost basically two 
calls at the same time that the cadaver dog located our victim, which was buried in a very shallow grave on the back part of the property, and at the same time that the uh, St. Tammany Parish Sheriff's Office took him into custody without incident. Sheriff Babs says the body was partially burned. He says Fayette County investigators got on the first flight to Louisiana Thursday morning, where they've apparently had no trouble interviewing Hardin. It meant that angry. We meant that they want to get married. You've been with this woman for 14 years. She has two kids for, for you. I'm going to leave the fact that he's a pastor. I'm not going to talk about it because that is what you preach, right? You've been with this woman for 14 years and you shot her. See, and they asked her, why didn't she leave since? She said she wanted to put her family together. She wants things to work. Women, I always say this, when you see danger just run most of the time things don't get better you just manage it you just adjust to the problem to the situation going on with you they don't get better right once you say something that you know that is danger to you and your children run you don't you cannot change a man you can't change him even if he's a good person out there with his kind of job, which is a pastor, if we good, good with people out there, if he shows you the kind of person that he is, and you know the kind of person that he is, and you see that it's going to be a danger to you and your family, please leave before it gets to the stage whereby it will unalive you. It's scary what these men are doing to their wives. Just, just these few months, I know the news that I've seen of what husband have done to wife. Just these few months. And you're saying that women are happy in marriages or women are benefiting in marriages or men are angry. Like, it just shows how much they do not like their wives and they just want you for the baby. They just want you for the baby, right? Now he's on the run and he admitted it that, yes, he shot the wife to death. Some people say, it's not all men. It's not all men. It's not all marriages. I will marry right in Jesus' name. I will do this, this, this. And I'm like... <laughs> this leads me to the second video of this woman talking about the century men. She has part one, part two. But I want to start with part two first. Then we'll go to part one. Because I kind of enjoy the part two more than the part one. <laughs> Where she was talking about the century men and marriages, how... We were fooled, women were fooled to believe that marriage is the ultimate. By the end of the day, it is not. Let's watch this video together and I'll share my thoughts at the end of the video. And it's interesting too, right? Because some people, men mostly, are like, well, not all men. You can't generalize. And I have to say, sitting here as a 35 year old woman, that I cannot tell you a single example of a woman that I have known in my life where she has said to me, marrying that man lifted me up into a higher level. I am a better person now because I married him. I have grown, I am nourished, I am full. I can't, I have never, ever, met a woman who has said that to me, right? I've not seen this. Of course, we've all heard, right? Like, oh, my better half. Yeah, everybody says that. It means nothing to me. I'm talking about truly people who have confided in me about their relationships. Mm -hmm. Women, usually what they're saying to me in their relationships, about their relationships is, well, he tries. Or he's a good man. Mm -hmm. Man, man. Right. That's that's what we're grateful for. Just just a man who isn't bad. We're, we are literally accepting the bare minimum mm -hmm. and wondering why we're miserable. Because we've been told to accept the bare minimum. Right. What I hear from women, you know, I don't I don't hear, oh, I married him and it has you know, elevated me. What I hear is I married him and I have another child to take care of. I married him and all my dreams went out the window. I married him and then, you know, he wanted kids and I had kids, right? Women are, have really just 
been taught and conditioned to want to be a slave to mm -hmm. their children, to their husband. And I feel like women are finally waking up to that, right? I mean, we give away our last name. We become the man's property. And then we do all of the emotional labor and mental labor and physical labor of raising the man's children who has his last name, not the mother's, right? And so when there's a divorce or something, those children still have his last name. It's just, it's modern day slavery, y'all. It's modern day slavery. And I think the more women who can wake up and realize you know, and it's, it's not like men are inherently, I don't believe that they are inherently bad, but I think the way that we condition them and we teach them not to feel, and then we expect them to get married and they're faced with their wives who are like, please just emotionally support me. And the men don't know how. And so their response is to just try to control the woman and silence her so that he doesn't have to deal with the fact that he does not have the tools. He is not equipped. Mm -hmm. Society, his family did not equip him to be able to deal with a woman, right? We don't teach men to deal with women. We don't teach men to relate to women. We teach men to control women. Yeah. Because our entire society benefits. So I've been seeing a lot of posts about like decentering men and I'm really fascinated by this sort of movement because it's something that I think I've been doing without labeling that it that for the last like year or so. Once I decided like I'm not gonna get married again, I'm not having children, it really called into question like the what you know, my relation to men at this point, like what am I looking for with men, if anything? Um, and it just occurred to me the other night, I was like, you know, when I was in my twenties I used to spend so much time trying to look good for a man hoping that one would pick me. <laughs> like, I say this out loud and it makes me laugh because <laughs> like, I can't imagine wanting a man to pick me. Like now it's like, am I going to pick you? Like. And the answer is most likely there's a 90% chance that no, I will not be picking you because you're probably as a man going to take from me and my peace and my happiness in some way. Mm -hmm. um, I've had enough experiences with men to see that I have exactly one male friend who's a very dear friend to me and he gives and he, it's reciprocal and it is a beautiful relationship friendship and I will never change it. Well, I can't say never. I mean, things happen, but I just like think about how I would obsess over like, Am I thin enough? Can you see my abs enough? Is my butt big enough? For what? For a, for a mediocre man with unresolved trauma to come into my life and either be violent with me because of his own unresolved issues with women, want me to be his, his mother, or just drain me of emotional and mental labor because we've taught men to take from women, right? Like. I spent all this time to try to attract a soul sucker. I spent all this time to try to bring that poison into my life. Oh my God. It just blows my mind. It literally makes my head go like, Oh my God. And so once I decentered men and you know, I've seen a lot of posts about this. It's like, I'm not talking about what men are doing. I, I mean, of course I date and I talk to guys and we chat and this and that. But it's, it's very clear to me early on, like whether you're in alignment or you're not. And if you're not, we don't talk about it. We don't spend energy. Why this? Why this? Why? It doesn't matter. It either is or it isn't. I know where I'm going. No one's going to distract me from that. No one's going to take away from the capacities, the mental and emotional capacities that I have dedicated to my purpose. No one's going to take away from that. And if you do take away from that, you got to go. You either have to support it and add to it and, and, and uplift and help, or you got to go because, and we see this so much with women, right? Like they get married and have kids and all their dreams disappeared, mm -hmm. had to, because they can't possibly spend the time and energy. We see this with ballerina farms. They can't spend the time and energy towards their own goals while they're expected to take care of their husband. They're expected to take care of their children. And I will be damned if I am another woman with that story. Hail to the no. I'm going to do what I came here on this earth to do, what my purpose is. And again, if you can't be in alignment with that, you got to go. And I am just so in love with that. I'm so in love with that. You need to look good for a man. 
you need to make sure a man will like this oh you're doing this men don't like women that wear makeup men don't like women on their natural hair men don't like women with frontal and uh, closure or wigs men like women with bold earrings you know wearing earrings men doesn't like women men like natural beauty or oh, you're too official men don't really like eyelashes so stop doing eyelash these are the things they tell young girls to say a man will not come and meet you if you do all of this so don't do them so that you will have a man these are like lies upon lies <laughs> I just feel like a man will come and meet you no matter what, no matter how you look, right? They always will come and meet you. And if you keep stopping and doing things for them, you end up not even knowing who you are or what you want at the end of the day. Imagine just being with a man and it asks you, why are you still with this man? I'm like, he's a good man. I see videos online of maybe a boyfriend and a girlfriend maybe something happens to the girl and you see the guy available or maybe paying attention to what she's saying or maybe there was one i even saw that the guy ran to come and meet the, she, the girl had accidents and she called her boyfriend and he came to meet her and a lot of people in the comments are like oh he's a good man oh i love the fact that he came immediately i'm like okay <laughs> okay he's a good man like okay the way people just like when a man just do something so so normal something so normal like so if my friend called me now i'm not even talking about boyfriend or husband if my friend calls me now has an accident i'm like this is happening to me now i'll rush there so you think i will not rush there if i can at that moment if i'm at that town or i'm in that space i'm not going to go there does that make it, if a woman does it, it's a normal thing, but let a man do it. He's a good man. He pays attention to details. He did it. So all these little things that is normal that we women do to each other, when a man does it, it's, a, it's like they glorify them. And I don't get it. I don't get why they get those glory for something that we do normally for each other, right? Like something we, we you just have to do it. You see, we see when a man stays at home with his kids, and maybe you see the woman just went out, she just went out, maybe she went to the market. Or she's not even going to hang out to, she just step out of the streets, out of the house to cross to the next streets to go and get something. And you see people ask her like, where are your children? Are they are home. Who is staying at home with them? Hannah is your father. Ha is a good man. <laughs> you all, oh, as in, automatically is a good person. But you see a man will travel for months and they ask him, where's your family? They are, they are in some, some country. Nobody come and say, oh, your wife is a good woman. No, your wife is trying. No, your wife, go back home and take care of your family or something. But once a man does it for just a few periods, not for a long time, because a man cannot do it for a long time, trust me. For just a few periods that they will do this thing, they are glorified. They are praised. They are a good man. Oh, you're a good man. Oh, you married a good man. Oh, I love the I love the way he looked at you. How, how is he supposed to look at me? How is he supposed to take he's, he's supposed to take care of me? Yes, he's my man. He's supposed that's his, that's what he's supposed to do. But because the way relationship is, women are the ones doing most of the things. So when a man does something little, they praise him and all of that. <sighs> What is your take on these two conversations we have in today's video? Can you share your thought down in the comment section? Respectfully as always, and I will see you all in my next video. Bye.